Hello everyone and welcome to a very special edition of the Midweek Mentor. Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, race, we're going to talk a little bit about racism and prejudice and just trying to deal with and assess our role as Christian believers in what we're seeing right now. And I'll just tell you this right now, I'm not signing up for any bumper stickers. I'm not signing up for any hashtags. We're going to look at this thing through. This is a Bible. Okay. So this is the Bible. And that's, that's how we're going to be um, dealing with this issue. But before we even get there, I wanted this first kind of episode uh, to just be my story because I feel like one of the best ways that we can approach and deal with this because we've got people screaming on both sides of the issue and it's just, it's all noise to me. Um, you've got people being mean to each other on both sides. You've got people acting out in ways that they should not and everyone calls themselves, you know, the moral standard. Everyone calls themselves the upright and it's not right. And uh, what we should be doing in, in my humble opinion as a Christian leader is we should, we should be having conversations with each other. We should be talking with people, um, not talking at people, not, um, not barraging people with our, our chosen list of facts. It's just not right. And that goes both ways. And so you're not going to get any bumper sticker theology from me. Uh, today. Uh, today is just going to be about my story. And hopefully this story can um, impact you or hopefully open your eyes to, to look at your own lens, to look at the way that you are, have been viewing the world because I, I, for the most part of my life, was not viewing the world the right way. So I grew up in Yuba City. It's a town about the size of Lodi, about 60,000 people, and it's up north past Sacramento and before Chico, right on 99. And so not too far from here, um, and very similar to Lodi, really. And I grew up there, spent about 19 years of my life there uh, before coming to the San Joaquin Valley. And for those of you who don't know, the way I came to the San Joaquin Valley was through jail. They shipped me, I got into big trouble, and they shipped me to Stockton to do a drug program there. But before that, while I was growing up, man, I just, I love my parents, and they they gave me so much. They gave me, and I wasn't raised in a Christian home. Um, my mom tried a few times to take me to church, you know, and both of my parents had like the Christian values, um, the moral standard in them, but, you know, church wasn't like on the docket. My mom tried a few times and I went with the neighbor a few times. I knew who God was, but I wasn't exactly raised in church, but my parents did a wonderful job just being kind. Like I never saw them fight I know they fought, probably fought, but I never saw them fight. They, they had enough restraint to not fight in front of my sister and I. And that just goes to show like the kind of people they are. Very, very kind, courteous, respectful, patient. Uh, they're wonderful people. And one of the good things I got from that was growing up, I just didn't have a lick. I can say with all integrity, I did not have a lick of racism in me. Um, Yuba City, for those of you who don't know, has got one of the few Sikh temples. And it was on my street, Terra Buena Road in Yuba City has a Sikh temple on it. And there's a Sikh parade that happens every single year that draws about 60,000 East Indians to that one street. And it was just, it was bonkers. It was crazy. It was a huge celebration. And so um, as far as diversity, there was some in my little podunk town of Yuba City. And I had East Indian friends. I would go to their house. Um, and believe me, there were definitely um, different shades of, of everyone. And I never remember feeling, God is my witness, I never remember feeling or thinking, looking at someone who looked different than me, I never remember feeling, well, they're probably this or they're probably that. I just never had that. But the story goes on. Getting older, I started to feel like, because I didn't feel that way, probably nobody felt that way. It was probably all, you know, racism, that's old. You know, that's not real anymore. 
um, it's all, you know, you know, because of me, you know how we are, we're selfish and we think that the way we see things is the way they are. We don't, you know, when we're younger, we don't realize that other people's experience are very real and I didn't know that. And so just to speak a little bit more to that, like even when I started getting in trouble and went to jail, I, I was incarcerated for 12 months, for 12 months. And it would have been very easy for me to jump on board with the white bandwagon. You know, you can see what color I am, right? I could have jumped on that bandwagon, nice young looking white guy, could have jumped into that and been with the white people and had money on my books and had food on my plate. And, but I never did. I just never, I felt strongly like I didn't, I, I would not, and it was a source of pride for me, I, I just didn't do that. And I chalked that up to my parents. But my failing was, I thought that nobody, if I didn't feel that way, maybe nobody feels that way. It wasn't until I got a little older and you know, went to college and, and started meeting more adults. You know, because when you're young, you're young and you don't see things. Um, and I'm not, I'm not old, but I'm not young either, 35 years old. So the 90s where it was at for me. It wasn't until I started getting a little older that I realized and had more friends of color and started to reach out and just hearing their stories, I realized these people have been through things that I've never been through. Uh, these people have had talks with their family that I've never had to have with my family. You know, my parents never told me that I needed to watch out for this, that, and the other thing. Like when cops pulled me over, it was like, whatever, I don't care. But after having some friends, you know, friends that, you know, meeting them in the church, meeting them in school and hearing their stories of, you know, not always, I'm not saying that every single person has dealt through this, but it's definitely very real that, and I started to realize, man, I was ignoring I was ignorant. I was choosing to ignore uh, these very real issues. And so that's my story. I, I, didn't, I didn't learn till Bible college. And there was a professor in my Bible college that really helped me to see that um, differences in people, differences in cultures, differences in skin tones and heritage and how families do things, because I ignored them. I, I, I pretended like, no, you and me, we're just the same. We're exactly the same. I don't see color. You know, like, what an insulting thing to say. <laughs> I didn't think about it though. I didn't think, I, I was ignorant. I, I didn't think about that. Like, what if somebody looked at me and said, oh, I don't see your hair is brown and your eyes is green. It's like, is there something wrong with my brown hair and green eyes? You know, I just didn't, I didn't think that uh, diversity should be celebrated and we should champion that. and. Um, you know, the truth is our country has got some dings on our record. That's a very, very light way to put our heritage. Um, but it's real. It is real. And so I wanted to just start by saying my story, you know, as a white young man, just in my context, you know, your context might be different. I understand that. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Like, we all have a different perspective on this. We all have a different worldview. But if you're a Christian now, this should be a worldview. And, th and this is what we're gonna be talking about in the next few weeks. Like, how should we be viewing these justice issues? Um, I, I like, and who grew up saying the Pledge of Allegiance in the morning? I pledge allegiance to the flag, United States of America, and you just kind of ramble through it. But as an adult, I started thinking more about it. And I really like it. Though the part I like is, I pledge allegiance to the flag, United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, and then it's where it gets good. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I like that. I, I, that's a good pledge. <laughs> that's a good, that's, that's tiptoeing around biblical principles right there. Liberty and justice for all. Um, and that's what, that's what I want to talk about. I want, how can we bring... One nation under God make us indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying the world is ever going to share our standards as Christians. You know, I'm not mad at the world for acting like the world. What a stupid thing that would be. 
to be like, well, that the world, you know, and everybody who's not a Christian, you know, they ought to be, they're going to act however they're going to act. But as Christians now, we it's written out for us. The standard is written out for us. And we need to realize that as far back as Cain and Abel, you know, with Adam and Eve's ki- first kids, Cain and Abel, there was sin and hatred there. There was murder there. Cain murdered Abel for practically nothing. For nothing. God honored Abel's uh, offering and he didn't honor Cain's and Cain was like, oh, I'm going to kill him then. Okay. And they had the same parents. They're probably the same color. So sin and hatred lives in our hearts. We're born with sinful natures and it's foolish to think that someone that doesn't have Christ in their life is going to just uh, magically get it. But as Christians, we, we need to know where our standards lie and they lie right here. And so I want to start this conversation with just my story. This is just my story. You know, your story probably very different than mine. I get that. I, I think it's great that we have different, that we have different experiences and we can share that. But I wanted to start this conversation off and I wanted to let, you know, all my friends know of color. You know, I'm, 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 I'm thinking a lot about what you've been through uh, in our country. I'm thinking a lot. And even my you know, people who are the same as me, you know, people who are white like me. I'm thinking a lot about how we can, um, what, what's the right way? What's the right way? Because, I mean, I'm a little late to the party. It's been several weeks now. And silence doesn't always mean agreement. Sometimes silence can mean fear. Like when my kids, when I scold my kids and you know, ask them redundant questions. Anybody who has kids knows this. Why did you do that? Why? Da, 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 da. And they just stand there. You know, their silence isn't like agreeing with what I'm saying. Their silence means they're, they're afraid to speak because they're afraid of what the, the ramifications would be. And so I want to start this conversation off by letting you know that everyone has a story. Um, you can share yours kindly and you can listen to others' story kindly and respectfully. So our, our, our stories are important, and, and conversation is the name of the game. I want to leave you with this. Um, and this is one of the things that really helped me to, to come to this conclusion. Um, Tony Evans is a wonderful Bible, Bible teacher. Um, mo- many of you probably know who that is, um, but you can Google his name and you'll get plenty of information on Tony Evans, African-American Bible teacher, pastor of a church in Texas, and wonderful man of God. Wonderful man of God by anybody's standards. Um, in an interview, I learned that he wasn't allowed to go to Bible college because he was black. And then later he was allowed to go, but on probation. And I was like, for real? For real? Like, I know not every black man has been through that probably, but some have. And if they haven't, then maybe their parents did. So I'm just starting to wake up a little bit to the fact, and I'm, I'm being dangerously vulnerable with you. I'm starting to wake up to the fact that just because I haven't seen it doesn't mean it's not real. And just because I didn't experience it doesn't mean it's not real. And so I want to open the door um, to peace, peaceable conversations and the acknowledgement that, man, we need to celebrate uh, this kind of diversity and celebrate what the differences that people have been through and be, be right Christians, living peaceable lives, honoring our authority, but also uh, getting past some very natural problems that we're just born with. We're born with sin. We're born with hatred and we're born with prejudice just because I didn't, I wasn't prejudiced a lot when I was a kid. It doesn't mean I didn't have sin and I didn't have other things right around that wrong with me. Like we, we've all got to deal with this in our own way and we've all had different experiences. So we need to really rally around this word of God to see, man, how can we deal with this? How can we get close? Now, I know this wasn't a normal Bible study. This is just a story. And so I want to thank you for joining me for this. And I hope my story was helpful to you. And I, I hope that you continue to engage with us here at Lifeline Church um, as we continue to unpack how we can Uh, bring liberty and justice to all and be one nation under God, indivisible. Be one church, (laughs) 
indivisible. How about we just start there? To be the church and, and coming together and, and really creating a safe place uh, to get past some of the things that we've had to deal with. Thank you so much. I'm praying for you. And matter of fact, I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everybody listening, Lord, that we would open our hearts, open our minds to your love, and that we would embrace the love of God that you've shown us and help us to love others the way that you've called us to. That the world would know we're your disciples by the way we love one another. Lord, I thank you for these people who are tuning in and I thank you for their compassion. I thank you for their I thank you for their their desire to want to get better and grow. We all have ways to grow, God. And so no matter if we're young or old in the Lord or in life, Lord, we all have ways that we can grow and get better. So Lord, I thank you for everyone here whose whose desire is to get better at at difficult issues. I thank you for them and I pray grace over them as they as they attempt to do just that. Thank you, Lord. And I pray for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. God bless you. And I can't wait to talk to you again really soon.